back, well, at the height of last summer, we were all treated to the spectacle of a waterborne contraption that was used to battle severe pollution at a remote upscale pond in the Hamptons. It was the latest visual evidence of the consequences of excessive nitrogen in our waterways and emblematic of the lack of real resources to reverse this fouling of long treasured natural beauty. An unusual sight at Georgica Pond in East Hampton as this waterborne machine trundles its way through the once again algae polluted waters. This is like a floating combine tractor that collects macroalgae. Local residents calling themselves friends of Georgica Pond raised more than $80,000 to rent the machine. This after discovering that toxic blue-green algae had once again made the pond virtually unusable for recreation. The pond is so polluted that you can't go kayaking, you can't go paddleboarding, you can't go crabbing, you can't go fishing. Or swimming. Four years ago, a dog died after licking the pond's algae tainted waters, which can make people very sick. Town trustees blame exploding development of large mansions with leaking septic tanks. They also question the overuse of sprinklers to keep expansive lawns ultra green while introducing exotic foreign shrubs and bushes to the landscape. As you irrigate your lawn, you put down more fertilizer, you're putting down more nitrogen. Now you're planting non-native species that require more fertilizer and more irrigation. So it becomes a vicious circle. Some residents who came to see the pond's condition say their neighbors need to be more responsible. I think it's a travesty that's happening to our environment out here. There's people that make their living off the pond, either from Bayman, they've been back here since 1648. The floating machine is now scooping up all the nitrogen-fed vegetation that clogs the pond. It'll be taken to a compost facility. And of course, that was last summer. Joining us now is Kevin McAllister with the environmental group Defend HTO, H2O. They have an emphasis on water quality, and welcome to the show, Kevin. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, I mean, that was last summer, but the problem still exists. As we turn the corner on winter and look ahead to many days outdoors, we hope, where does it stand with reversing this contamination threat, particularly in our inland ponds and lakes? It's a long-term prospect. We've got to address, you know, all the nitrogen loads coming from our household septic systems. We've got to back off the lawn fertilizers. The groundwater is enriched right now, and that's the pump that will feed these ponds and coastal waters. It'll, it'll take years to really purge itself once we address the, you know, the inputs coming from the households. Well, we're seeing this in a number of ponds and, of course, even some lakes, Lake Ronkonkoma. And uh, in lower and upper lake and Yapank have had problems for years. So it's not brand new, but I think people are finally becoming aware of it. They used to go down and walk their dog or, or bicycle along or canoe, and now they find they can't do these activities. I think we've reached a tipping point, uh, certainly on the east end of the island, where the influence of, again, uh, conventional cesspools has uh, affected our water quality. You know, the development of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you know, ultimately is caught up to us now. Well, explain that because, you know, somebody buys their home, there's so many things to worry about, right? And especially when they're negotiating. Now it seems like septic tanks, what is the state of your septic tanks going to be part of that negotiation about buying a house or selling a house? No? Explain how that's actually coming true, especially on the East End. Well, the, the regulations on septic uh, falls with Suffolk County, and, and their codes are trying to ensure that they, they function properly. In other words, they discharge from the household. They do virtually uh, very little to address nitrogen loadings. So what we're trying to introduce is advanced technologies in replace of these systems that will effectively remove the nitrogen from the waste. But they're fairly expensive, and we'll talk about the ideas mm -hmm. for subsidies because most people would be uh, really uh, shaken to try to pay fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars right now for uh, something they didn't realize they were going to have to replace, um, like maybe right away, because this does. Uh, take a situation where people are going to have to respond quickly on the east end, right? Explain the new deal they have there and the requirement that homeowners will face. The five east, town, uh, east end towns approved the community preservation fund for a, a water quality allocation. There's 20 percent of, of the annual fund that's generated and that will go towards uh, rebates to homeowners that ultimately upgrade these systems. Uh, there will be a requirement for new construction to uh, incorporate these. So advances. new homes yes. will have to have these new yes. systems. So you see already it's coming and there's been talk about when somebody either buys a home or sells it going down the road that this may be a requirement then as well even for the, the selling of uh, existing homes not just new homes. You think it's going to come to that? 
Oh, I think it has to come to that. Um, you know, in the next 10 or 20 years, we've got to try to transition these homes. You know, there's several hundred thousand into the new systems. Uh, so the you know point of transfer, new homes, uh, these various trigger points. You know, those are the opportunities to transition into advanced treatment. And these old, so people understand these old septic tanks. They don't really treat uh, any of the no, nitrogen, right? Correct. And then somehow it leaks through. Uh, explain how that happens. Well, it's coming out of a pipe. Uh, a, you know, a, a code system will have a, a septic tank collecting the solids, and then it bleeds off into the leaching pools. So the uh, water, the water that continues, pumps there, yes, and the hydraulics down, in, right down, down, into down into the groundwater. groundwater. And 90% of the uh, nitrogen thereabouts is is basically from human urine. So and it's, it's there falling. you go from urine. And so I mean, this is uh, what we're dealing with. And now there's uh, lots of talk about uh, how to help homeowners out, but who's got the money for it? There was a plan to try to expand this for the county by Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone, but it got kind of a cold shoulder from the Republican-led uh, majority in the state legislature. Is that plan dead? Because there was thoughts of putting it to a referendum so people could create a similar way of funding uh, these new septic systems. Is that plan dead in the legislature? On, on the county scale, as you said, it was withdrawn last year. I, I believe it's being reintroduced, uh, trying to repackage it, if you will, and you know, work out some of the nuances, but I, I hope it comes forward for referendum because on a, on a county level, we really need them to be a, a significant player in this effort. All right, now something we mentioned earlier, uh, ocean water, salt water intrusion into our drinking water, how is that happening? Saltwater intrusion, of course, on coastal areas, and we are surrounded by water bodies. Um, Ultimately, as we draw down the, the groundwater, so increased irrigation, increased household use, plus now you have sea level rise coming up, it, it basically acts as a, a bit of a wedge coming into the land base underneath into uh, the freshwater supply, particularly on the coastal areas and turning, turning that area uh, brackish. So below ground, there these two bodies of water are meeting? I would have yes. thought there was some... Uh, impermeable barrier to it, there is not? No, and, and particularly if, if the volume of fresh water, the groundwater, basically hold, keeps at bay the, the seawater, but now with the drawdown, we're, we're shrinking that groundwater, sea level rise is coming up, so the penetration in, in, into the land is, is uh, more pronounced. So what are they doing about that, and how are they studying that? Uh, they're starting to study it. There's a, a number of towns that are embarked on this. I know the municipal water suppliers are paying close attention. Uh, relocating wells where necessary. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a very serious problem. Uh, it's only going to get more pronounced in, you know, in coming decades. Well, uh, we'll be watching it, though. Yes. And uh, we know you will be, too. Yeah, Kevin absolutely. McAllister uh, with a water quality update from his group, Defend H2O. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And when we come back,